Hello, and welcome to another edition of Chaos Craft, or Chaos Engine. Um, <clears throat> this is the third time I've recorded this brainstorm, so uh, this is a brainstorm for what I like to call Chaos Trainer, um, or possibly Pocket Trainer. Uh, so this is an idea I had, so I, we're, I'm still continuing Chaos Craft um, right now, which is the Minecraft version of this. And we're making some strides in there. But in the meantime, I've been playing around with some other ideas of how I could accelerate this and get you guys more involved. A lot of people wanted to install this. So I thought of an interesting way where I could make you guys the trainers. You guys could define the fitness functions. You guys could define the levels. Then train AIs and compete them. And so the idea was for, I wanted something that you could probably run on mobile, so it's something you guys could play and download and stuff. And so I was looking into Unity, and so I'm starting to learn, teach myself Unity, um, which is going well. I'll try and do a screencast on what I did yesterday, but I built a level that suits this, so we'll do that in a separate screencast, because this is on my iPad right now. But let's just get into this. So the idea is that you guys could drag and drop and design a level. So this, the level has a start and a goal and a trap. And you guys would then generate AIs on your phone um, that would, you know, randomly, they would each get a score the closer they got to the goal. And again, you guys can define the fitness function. I have plans for that. I got to go quick because the last one was 18 minutes and YouTube didn't like that um, uploading from my iPad. So, but uh, I'm going to go quick. So you guys could... Um, you know, train them and whoever makes it to the goal first. Now, that's not that exciting until you put together, like, large number batches. Um, so, and then ideally, that communication. So, you know, ideally, we give them some ability to, um, if they sense X, then they say, you know, then they emit a noise. And I think it'd probably keep it pretty much like an 8-bit type noise, like a beep, something like that. And so that way, it's fairly simple. Communication, so they have like a they can choose one of eight different beeps, and if the other ones hear that frequency of beep in that direction, then maybe that means something else. So um, you know, I, I or if one of them gets injured, then they you know emit a beep or something of that ability. But the score would be based on how many of these guys made it across, and they couldn't all just follow the same path because um, the levels would change. And then so what we'd do is I'd give you like a rough base level or description of how this. The challenge is going to work and then we develop a much more complex level that they'd be forced to solve when they're actually competing and you guys would decide how you wanted to train it you know you guys could change the fitness function you guys could change you know the the, the levels and design your own levels and then you guys could have other people compete against that so um that's kind of the idea where i'm going uh, but the idea the biggest thing is that they need to be able to communicate and they need to be able to work together um, that's really where i think it's going to be cool so um, the artistic note, I'm looking at something like Zelda, uh, just because I think the grid-based system is going to be the easiest one for me to build. Um, idea of a night course where they couldn't actually see, so they have multiple inputs. Right now I'm looking at, I have a different, I should have taken a picture of this, but um, they have uh, the ability to see, the ability to hear, and possibly the ability to smell. Um, you could also choose to breed AI, so if you trained one AI to do this, another AI to do that, you could try and you know, do a, a breed where they would, it would generate basic ones like that. Um, the idea, so here's just some design notes, like a smarter lemmings in a way, but that's kind of a side scroller type thing. Um, I don't know, they might have topped that one, I don't know. But this is, or like Pokemon, but with like larger numbers. So you actually would be, in the most authentic sense, training them. So, and back to the training notion, like, so you wouldn't be solving the puzzle yourself. You're more like a coach coaching a team. And you kind of d define drills. But once you get them on the field, you could, you know, they, they're in charge of the play. You don't, you can yell and stuff, but, you know, they have to make the play go right. So, um, so I'm listening to the Sapiens book, by the way. It's a, it's a history of human evolution. And um, this is just some game mechanics that I definitely want because these, these are things that Sapiens has that, nothing else has or that, that made us evolve, you know, past, um, you know, our, our ancestors and fire is a big one. So that'd be definitely a game mechanic that I want language and, um, basically communication. And so I also thought about them allowing them to make markings on the floor. So if one of them gets to a certain point, let's just say a maze, another one could have just marked like dead end or something like that or danger or whatever on the floor. 
at that saw something or of that nature. So that's kind of a cool part. Um, I'm not going to go through all the stuff. It's pretty basic. There'll be a challenge list. You can define your training rooms. I call them right now. Um, and then you, you know, this chain training room is training for this challenge. Then there'd be a level builder and, uh, that you could do in the bot details, the same stuff we see on chaos craft neural net view. Um, and, but there would be a submit to challenge. So you could submit your bot to the challenge. It would send us the neural network file, which I'm defining and, uh, you go from there. So, um, the fitness function screen is similar to the one I brainstormed previously. You'd say, Hey, I want them to collect whoever collects for every time you collect a banana, you know, so the action is collect, the filter is uh, object type banana, then you get a point. You know, every time you kill, uh, you know, object type monster, then you get 10 points. Every time you, whatever, I'm losing track of my, but every, the, every time you cross over or arrive at point X, you know, goal point, then you get 100 points. So things like that um, would define your scores, and that's what we'd be using to duplicate them. Um, and so, where was I? So what I want to do, a lot of my doodles in here, is, let me try and draw this, this, this is the most basic level I've kind of just, I'm using as my base here. W A T water cool and let's just say we get like a brown box or something like that and so this floats and the idea is to push that into the water and then we go ahead and spawn up you know group one of these guys so they all come out some of them spin in circles some of them go right to the water and drown some of them just stand there and do nothing um, and maybe one of them collides there. Well, the ones that stand there do nothing, they get a score of zero. The ones that come out to at least this far, they get a score of, you know, two out of the possible, let's just say 10. And so we breed the twos because they're the highest scoring ones. So now we've got a bunch of guys that run out in all, in all directions. We change them slightly and probably some guys that spin in circles. But one of them manages to hit this thing and push it into the water. And so we've got a guy that ran towards the box, ideally. Um, so then we go ahead and the next one, imagine the box is reloaded. Um, and so maybe we've got a bunch of guys that just run left. And that's, that's kind of pointless, but they all managed to push the box in and they're just kind of stuck over here in the corner. So that's generation three. And then we finally get some guys that once they cross the water after five seconds, they zag back. Some of them probably go back in the water and drown, whatever. Some of them probably get stuck in the corner, but one of them finally makes it here. And then we breed that guy. And now we've got a bunch of guys that make it to that exit fairly efficiently. Now the tricky part comes when you change the level. So you guys, this would be where you guys have to come in level designs that you guys would want to put that box randomly positioned because you would want guys that see type box and run towards it or something of that nature. And so, that way you don't have just a bunch of guys that are still running to that side of the course and just drowning automatically. So that's where the, the beauty comes in the level design. And ideally we're going to have levels that are, that take 10 minutes to solve, not 10 seconds. <coughs> and actually the cool thing is that when we get enough of these AIs, I can actually build another AI that builds levels. And I'd say like only between 10 and 20% should finish it. And that's a, uh, so I could generate levels that are even more challenging to your AIs and then you have to retrain them. So we've got this ever increasing level of complexity. So, Hey, you actually just caught me in the middle of YouTube stuff. So, so either way, I'm going to wrap, I'm going to wrap this up and then, uh, thank you guys for checking me out on chaos craft chaos engine. Uh, Matt, I uh, appreciate you guys following me on Patreon, and I don't know where the close button is for the screencast. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>